Hey guys, how's it going? So in this video, we're going to talk all about the new metabolic pathways that I've been creating graphics for and some of the things I'm going to be doing in the future. I've been spending the last week or week and a half kind of finalizing how I'm going to do these protein case studies. And so after finalizing that, I went ahead and started diving into topics such as gluconeogenesis and anaerobic respiration. The interesting things about anaerobic respiration is that this is when we don't have a sufficient amount of oxygen in the cell. Pyruvate is going to take a little bit of a different pathway. In mammal cells, it goes and forms lactic acid, but in yeast and other microorganisms, it actually forms ethanol. It goes through a two-step process where it first forms acetaldehyde, and then it forms ethanol. So I did a really like short little protein case study on some of the proteins that do these anaerobic respiration reactions. The reason why these reactions are so crucial is because it helps provide NAD plus for glycolysis. Because glycolysis is still happening even in anaerobic conditions. It's still producing ATP, but we need NAD plus to fuel it. Since we're not going to the TCA cycle or oxidative phosphorylation, anaerobic respiration like this helps provide NAD plus for glycolysis to continue. I soon realized that I didn't want to stay on gluconeogenesis, glycolysis, and anaerobic respiration forever. So I had to find other metabolic pathways to start talking about. And I tried my best to find like a good starting ground. Well, a good starting ground was glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, since a lot of things are going to refer back to that and the TCA cycle, the Krebs cycle. So um, I was really confused at first what to start it off with, but I knew I wanted to get into fatty acid oxidation. I was getting ready to jump straight into fatty acid oxidation and talk about the pathway, but then I realized that one of my key things that I'm trying to do is build a community where we can learn biochemistry, organic chemistry, and other the scientists together kind of do this process alongside one another. And so I thought if I was going to go into fatty acid oxidation, I should take a few steps back and talk about lipids, triglycerides, and things that build up or feed into the fatty acid oxidation metabolism so we can get a bigger picture about what's going on. So, it, with the desire of creating a bigger picture, I spent the last few days starting to dive into more just detail-oriented, vocabulary-oriented stuff about lipids, um, and then I started off with fatty acids. Okay, so fatty acids. We have that carboxylic head group, and we have a fatty acid hydrocarbon tail. A lot of these properties are things we've seen before in organic chemistry. Going back to the fatty acid, a lot of the properties of the fatty acid are determined whether or not that hydrocarbon tail is saturated, unsaturated, and how long it is. When we think about triglycerides, we have a glycerol molecule that we have three fatty acids connected to it through an ester type bonding. Oh, we have the phospholipid, something we've talked about a lot because I just love membrane chemistry. So the phospholipid, we have a, two types, two main types. So let's talk about glycerol phospholipids. We have that glycerol molecule as the head group, that polar head group. Um, two of the positions on that glycerol molecule are connected to fatty acids. Those can definitely range. There's more common ones and more rare ones when it talks about variations of the length and saturation. Then we have sphingolipids. Sphingolipids are really similar to glycerol phospholipids. The only difference is its head group is not made from a glycerol backbone. Going back to glycerol phospholipids, we actually have that third position as a head group, which can really just be about anything, and this changes a lot of the properties of the phospholipid. We're getting a good basis of fatty acids and phospholipids, so let's start talking about metabolism again. So now I'm going to start talking about the metabolism of triglycerides. So we have this enzyme, lipoprotein lipase, which is going to cleave the ester type linkages between glycerol and the fatty acids to form free glycerol and free fatty acids. Now, the majority of the energy is coming from the fatty acids and beta oxidation, but a really small percentage comes from the glycerol. 
so I think it might be a good idea to focus on that molecule first, and how that metabolizes, and then go straight into the fatty acids. Currently creating a graphic about one of the enzymes that helps turn glycerol all the way to dihydroxyacetyl phosphate. So, one of the things that we have to do is first glycerol gets turned into glycerol 3 phosphate and then into DHAP. One of the interesting things is that DHAP can then enter glycolysis. A quick jab back to phospholipids. If we were to hypothetically dump a bunch of phospholipids into a vat of water, we would find that they would spontaneously rearrange themselves so to create vesicles. With fatty acids, they would create micelles. And so a lot of these properties are formed and are the fundamentals of channel proteins, membrane proteins, membrane formation, a lot of the things that we talk about on this channel. things that I talk about most on social media about how to study for this class is, is to not memorize. I struggled a lot when I was in this class and other classes, try my best to just memorize, put the picture in my head and hopefully regurgitate it on the exam. And now taking a few steps back, I can realize that that really never really works out. One of the best things to do for these classes, biochemistry, organic chemistry, is to focus on trends, reaction trends, how things are named in nomenclature. And there's a big trend when talking about enzymes, like the one I'm doing now, which is a dehydrogenase. It's an oxyreductase type of enzyme, one we've seen before. And these enzymes have a trend of using electron carriers to perform their oxidation and reduction. Most of the time, they're using the electron carrier as an oxidizing agent to help the reagent become oxidized as it gets reduced. want to talk about a few things over on my TikTok. What I'm doing lately is I'm starting to do community-based questions where I take questions about a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, about metabolism, glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and I'm trying my best to answer some of the most test-based questions that are put on tests and stuff like that, and we can work through them and how we got to the answers over on my TikTok. So if you're interested in that type of content, you might want to swing by over there and check it out. And I've also been posting a lot of these graphics over on my Instagram. Um, and over on my website, I do have two decks available, um, one focused all on proteins and amino acids, and the second one focused on the protein case studies that we've done for glycolysis. And I will be posting more in the future, so if you're interested for free download, you can go check those out. Um, but yeah, we're wrapping up with this graphic right now on um, one of the enzymes that helps with glycerol metabolism. Have the chance i just want to shout out this amazing moon model that i got from a company called astro reality ar over on instagram this is like it's such a cool thing it's like so detailed and like to the pixel it's totally worth it and it's so cool to have around my study area while i'm doing some work so you guys should go check them out tuning in and I hope you guys have a great day.